guys. Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, my name is Luca, I'm from Inedit Software. Uh, we are a software company based in Barcelona, we are from Spain. And Inedit has been around for 20, uh, 28 years now, and we provide a software solution for the digital textile market, okay? So we cover both the design side of digital printing, the printing areas, and also the sharing and uh, design managing aspect of digital printing. Um, today we are going to talk a little bit in Italy about designing because the M Textile is more focused on home deck and designs in general. Okay, and today I would like to talk with you about how to turn uh, an idea, how to turn a design into textile. Uh, we know that there are many software solutions around that helps people to, uh, let's say, uh, create their own arts and then make the art, so the design ready for printing. Uh, so I want, I want to share some information with you and I want to show you what Inedit does on that kind, on that aspect of the digital textile printing business. Okay, let's start. So as I said before, we will start with, I would like to show you some of the arts, some of the designs that our customers are, are building up all around the world. Then we're gonna talk about how to adapt a design to textile using Inedit solutions. And then we are gonna talk a little bit more about how to share and print your design because at the end of the day, of course you want to create your, your own arts, but you know that eventually your designs will be printed somewhere. Okay, let's start. So, we work really all over the world. We have many customers in Europe. Uh, we are very focused on textile. Uh, the majority of our customers, they either do fashion or uh, home deck business. And the designs that we have to deal with are really, really different. You can go through, uh, we've been seeing a lot of flowers recently, but we have a lot of customers using more geometric uh, designs, a lot of compositions in layers, and uh, let's say the, the, desi the designs that we're facing every day are very, very, very different, and uh, we, we, de we develop solutions that can address every type of designs that we find in, in the digital textile business. Overall, there are many solutions for pure design, so to create arts. Uh, these three solutions are vector-based, so we face that uh, people there are making logos, or we have a lot of customers working in the sport industry, for example, uh, use uh, InDesign, Illustrator, or CollaDraw. Uh, but if we want to talk about textile, uh, we really see that the majority of textile professionals, they create in Photoshop. Okay, so from the scratch, they take their own pen, they, uh, well, they, there are many tools to, to create, you know, better than me to create designs in Photoshop. Uh, what, what we see is that really, the Photoshop is still the most used software for textile application. But we have to say, Photoshop is a very good tool to create images, but Photoshop is not adapted to textile yet. So once you have your, your design ready, you don't have to forget the design will be printed afterward. And in order to adapt the, the, the design to textile, there are many steps that you have to do in Photoshop. And now I would like to see with you what are those steps. What, what you have to do to make sure that you can print your design. So, the first step, of course, is to create the design. So, use the tools that you want to use, you create the design in Photoshop. When the design is ready, you have to make sure that the design repeats in a certain space, because if you're lucky, somebody will print thousands of meters of your design. So you want to be sure that you can, you can make a, what we call a step repeat. So you, you have to create a repetition of the image in the, in the space. Then the next step, You want to, usually, you want to create many colorways starting from your original design. Or, even more important, your customers tell you, you know what, I like this design, but I want the flower to be reddish, for example. Or I want the background to, to use that particular pantone because I know that it's gonna work very well this year. So, at a certain point, you have to create color channels 
So you have to select some colors in your design and you have to create some colorways. If you're working well, if you're working in a controlled environment, you, you use your own color library, so you know what colors uh, belongs to your, to your space, to your printing space, or there are many people also working with Photoshop Picker and uh, making colorways more randomly, let's say. And at, at the end, uh, if you want to sell your designs, probably you will also need to create some layouts. So you would like to virtualize your design, uh, see how it looks like in, uh, in, uh, in real ambience. For example, here I put a, a model because we work very, very much in fashion, uh, but you can do the same with, uh, with a sofa, with curtain, uh, wallpapers, and so on and so forth. So these are the three basic steps that you have to do to adapt your design to be printed. This is the question that we usually ask to our customers. If you are a textile professional, how much does it take for you to, to make all the three steps? There is no good answer or bad answer. Depending on your Photoshop level, it can take for you, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. There are other persons that waste mornings and a lot of cup of coffee to, to get the job done. Uh, but what we did in Inedit, was to create a set of plugins specifically developed for Photoshop and for textile to help photo Photoshop users to adapt a design to a textile in a very easy manner. So for us, it takes something like 20 minutes to, to make the job done, okay? And now I'm gonna show you how it works. Whatever, but this gives the idea. 20 minutes is quite a good time. <laughs> So, as I said before, in Inedit we developed a set of plugins for Adobe Photoshop. Originally, the plugins were developed for traditional printing. So, the first customer, the first customer that asked us to, to have a plugin uh, used to make uh, to engrave cylinders. And uh, so, we started with a plugin for color separations. But then, in uh, during the time, we adapted the plugin to digital textile printing. A new textile basically is a compound of all these three things. Art creation, which belongs to you, to the designers that make the art, create the design in Photoshop. Of course, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop tool. And what we want to do with new textile is to create a workflow, a pure textile workflow for, 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 for Photoshop. So give to Photoshop the textile aptitude that it doesn't have at the moment. So let me go a little bit into details and I want to show you how this plugin works. We have four main plugins. The step and repeat plugin, which helps you to perform the first step of the, of the workflow, so to create the repetition of the image. Uh, the automatic color channel separation. Then we have a plugin that helps to create colorways using color libraries. And then we have also a plugin to create uh, image virtualization, so to, to, to see, it helps the user to simulate a design into a, into a real environment. Let me show you how, how they work. Let's start from the step and repeat. This is a video that goes in loop, I'm gonna talk on top of the videos, then if you have questions I can have, uh, answer to you later on. Uh, as you can see here, we're working inside Photoshop, okay? Here I have my original image, and thanks to the plugin, we can display a preview on the right side of the, of, the photo, of, of, the, of the Photoshop main page. You can apply a drop. So for example, this image is re repeating one and a half in vertical. So I'm creating a preview with the, the drop that I, that I chose before. You can also place a, a certain object, offset. And as you can see here, I create a new layer. I move the layer at the top of the image. And with a simple click, I can see how my modification applied to the old image. If you want to do the same, uh, the same thing in Photoshop, it probably take a lot of time because you have to enlarge the canvas size, you have to copy and paste the image several times. That you have, you have to apply modifications, go go back and do it all over again. Okay. With this plugin, it's very easy. There is also a a square window that allows you to move around the old image and when you decide where to drop the square, the image moves automatically in Photoshop. 
you can apply the modification that you want to apply. For example, here, again, I'm copy and pasting and creating a new layer, copy and paste, I'm moving it. And then with a simple click, I can see how my modifications affect the, the old image, okay? Again, you, this is a three by three preview. You can use larger previews. You can export also the final result if you want to. But in this case, what I want to do simply is to uh, create this, the repetition of the image. And when I'm done, I go back to the origin, I click save, and now my design is ready to be separated and to be colored, okay? So this is the first step. Once we have the design ready to be repeated, again, if I want to create new color rays, the first thing that I should do is to separate the colors in my image. So the original image was a normal RGB. What I want to do now is to create color channels. So I want to create a multi-channel file. file. How can I do that? We have a plugin called Masquerade, which is quite easy to use. It gives automatic color separation. So what I did in, the, in, the, in this image was simply to take the picker to select the colors that I want to separate, simply double clicking on the color in the image, and then using this move separations uh, color engine, we have two different color engines, so I don't wanna go too much into details, uh, but with a simple click, the separation is not working. Okay, with a simple click, the separation is automatic. Okay, as you can see here, now I'm selecting this, this separation was already done before. What I'm showing to you here is simply the, the final result. It works like Photoshop. You simply hide or unhide the eye on the left side of the screen, and we have created color channels in, in really it's, uh, I think it took four to five minutes for me to do that. And if you wanna separate this design in Photoshop, it might take some time because you have, you have at least two colors here overlapping, one on top of the other. So in order to control the, all the curves, it might really take some time. With masquerade, you can do it in five minutes, okay? Then, what can I do when my design is separated into, into color channel? I can jump to the other plugin that we have to create new color rays. Remember that I'm doing all of this inside Photoshop. With a simple click, you jump to a new interf to a new screen, let's say that the, the, a new interface that we de develop inside Photoshop, but everything is done with Photoshop tools inside Photoshop. Here you're watching at Neo Textile Colorations. At the center, we have our original RGB image that now became a multi-channel file. At the top, I have my color channels, if you remember. On the right side, I have my own color library, okay? It could be Antoni, it could be your own color library. I have my own color library. And on the left side, I'm, I'm seeing all my, all my color rays. Making new color rays is very simple. You simply look for the color that you want to use in the library, you drag and drop the color in the channel, and that's it, okay? This is one way of creating a new color ray. You can also use the simple picker, like I think later on in the video it is showing also how to change colors using the picker. And after you make the, the color ray, you can, all, you can always synchronize your color with your color library. Why am I putting a lot of, why I am underlying the, the use of, uh, of, the, of the color library? Because if you make color rays using the color library, you're sure that you can print what you see on the screen, okay? Let me give you a few more details about print what you see on the screen. Our plugin are made to work also with real profiles in Photoshop, okay? Photoshop is a RGB-based space. Our RIP software is also RGB-based. So imagine that I am in my office, I have my Macintosh, I'm working with Photoshop, and I have a small paper printer on my side. So I'm working on the screen, and I wanna see how my real colors are when, when printing on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a paper printer. So if you use the plugin in Photoshop, you can, and if you work with ICC profiles, 
you can see the real colors on the screen that later on are gonna be printed on, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the printer, on the paper printer. For example, here I have still my original design displayed with three different input profiles. The first one is a synthetic profile, is a sRGB profile, is a huge synthetic profile uh, which includes a lot of colors. It is a profile made for screen, but if you want to print this design with certain colors, in your, for example, here I was working with a Mimaki generic profile. I don't remember which Mimaki printer was this one. This was a TS500, it was a sublimation printer. I don't remember what paper I used. But what I want to show you here is that depending on the input settings, the color output can be very, very diff different. And this most of the time creates problems between the design department and the printing department because the designer wants this design and this is what he or she gets. So there is a miscommunication in the middle. Using ICC profiles in Photoshop can really help you to ease the communication between the design and the, and the printing department, okay? So don't forget about ICC profiles. Moving to the last step. Beside this step and repeat and the coloration, we also have a plugin for image virtualization. It's called Virtual Vision. Um, it's quite easy to use. You create a path uh, in Photoshop. For example, I, I choose this design because it was quite easy. There are not so many uh, pieces that I want to that I want to color. Uh, you create a path in Photoshop, then you jump into the plugin, and you can create grid manually, basically moving the points. You can create grids. You can apply also shadow on top of that, and then eventually you can either decide to use a color or you can also apply your design on top of the model. Again, you can do it with uh, sofas, curtains. Uh, we have customers working in the flooring business, so there are many, many, many applications that you that you can use. And after that, you can export this file back in Photoshop, save it as a PSD or PDF, JPEG or whatever, upload it in your own uh, uh, website, for example. There are many things that you can do with, uh, with this plugin. Okay, then I showed you what is a basic Workflow for uh, workflow textile workflow. So we started from a from a design made in Photoshop and we applied several steps to make the design ready to be printed. What can I do now? I have the design ready for printing. Well, let's print it and let's share it also. Okay, we have customers working with thousand, thousand, thousand of designs, and they had the problem of where can I store my designs and how can I share my work with customers or with an internal department. So in Inedit we develop an additional software which is called Neo Catalog. Uh, this is a server-based application where you can store all your designs, you can organize them. I want the video to start, okay. You can organize your, all your designs by, by keyword, uh, by collection, by customer whatsoever. And then you can share your designs with external customers. For example, here, I'm still selecting my own design. I look for flower here, and these are the designs that were popping up. You can create layouts if you want. There are many things that, that you can do with Neo Catalog, but I believe the two most important things are really sharing your work with your customers it is done via email. Simply, you send an email uh, with your customer with a, with a link. The customer click on the link and uh, they can see your, your words. And then sharing is the most important thing along with printing. Neo Catalog can connect to your printing department and you can directly send files from here to your printer and that's it. Okay? I believe this video is quite long. Well, we still have five minutes. Okay, so probably I missed one part. The first part was sharing, now we move to printing. Now I'm back in Photoshop. Okay, now I'm back in Photoshop. If in the stage before I share my, my design with my customer, 
Now I receive the order, I can print it. I can, with our plugin, you can, you can print directly from uh, Photoshop. We developed a panel, which is directly connected to Neo Catalog, and thanks to this panel, you can upload and download designs directly from Photoshop to Neo Catalog and on the other way around. And we also developed a panel that gives the possibility to print directly from Photoshop. So I have my design, I made it ready for textile, it's ready to be printed with a simple panel. You can connect to your digital printer, again, your paper printer, or you can send it to your printing department. And with a few clicks, you really have all your workflow interconnected. Okay? The videos are very fast, but we are just around the corner. If you want more information, we can spend more time together. Okay? I just want to give a rough idea of what we can do with, uh, with native plugins. So, jumping to the conclusions. My question the, question, the question that I asked myself at the beginning was, how can I adapt a design to be textile? And what are our suggestions to do these steps in an in a, in a easy and fast way? Well, the first suggestion would be, surely, try to set up a complete and connected workflow, okay? Try to, to, to choose one provider that not only take care of your designing part, but only understand about printing, understand about profiles, understand about textile in general, because we all know that uh, digital textile has huge possibilities, but there are also a lot of challenges, so you really have to understand your workflow and you, you need to work with a partner that cover all the aspects of digital textile printing. Then, even when you design, so even when you're designing into Photoshop, don't forget about ICC profile. If you're working with a, with a synthetic uh, uh, ICC, for example, the sRGB or the Adobe uh, profile, the, the default profiles that you find in, in Photoshop, be aware that probably those colors will not be printed in your digital printer. So be creative, but don't forget also the technical aspect of, of printing. We sometimes, might, sometimes, a lot of times, creates a lot of problem between uh, design and printing department. And at last, try to standardize your process. Make it easy. Make it easy for everybody. The idea behind the plugin is really to make uh, life for everybody easier in, uh, in Photoshop. Even though you are a textile, uh, Photoshop professional, so you don't need a plugin to make all the job, you can definitely save some time making color separations, creating a step and repeat, and uh, making simulations using the plugin. So really, try to make life easier for everybody. Not, even if you're working alone, you can either save time or share your job with, uh, with other, other people in an in a easy and fast way. And I believe that's all. Thank you so much for, for your attention. We are in, uh, where are we? G767, we are just around the corner. Uh, if you have any, any additional questions, I believe I ran out, ran out of time, so uh, I will wait for you down there. And again, thank you so much for being here.